We see here that massacre was the first option for Muhammad. He just loved it, I guess. But there was one tribe left, the Banu Quraiza, who remained neutral during all these conflicts. According to most historians, the Banu Quraiza tribe were supposed to stay neutral in battles or aid the Muslims in some ways. There is no evidence that they were supposed to fight together with the Muslims, but they were not supposed to ally with the attackers and fight the Muslims. That would break their treaty. Few years later, a great battle between the Meccan polytheists and the Muslims of Medina broke out, known as the Battle of the Trench. It was a battle where the Muslims in Medina dug trenches around the city in order to significantly weaken the attackers. The Meccan attackers were also reportedly joined by the leaders of the two Jewish tribes that were expelled before, the Banu Nadir and the Banu Kainuka. While they were besieging Medina, the Banu Quraiza tribe was initially neutral and only helped the Muslims with tools and weapons. But then some concerns began among the Banu Quraiza. Jews were in general a bit careful about Muhammad and Islam because they were mentioned in the Quran multiple times but didn't want to have anything to do with it. Since the Quran increased its critical language of Jews, the Jews of the Banu Quraiza became more careful. Some among the tribe raised the suspicion of them being attacked and expelled at some point if Muhammad has too much power, since the two other Jewish tribes were besieged and expelled by Muhammad under suspicious circumstances. Some among the Banu Quraiza also talked about Muhammad possibly getting weaker because of the way they defended Medina. And since they heard that the other expelled Jews joined the attacking Meccans, the Banu Quraiza reportedly went into secret negotiations with the Meccan polytheists in order to secure their own safety and that of other Jews. There is no evidence at all of the Banu Quraiza actively allying with the polytheists and fighting the Muslims. Some hadith even report that the tribe was approached by the attackers for help but turned them away. But there were rumors of the Banu Quraiza wanting to end their friendship with Muhammad and the Muslims. Now, Muslims mention treason and say that the Banu Quraiza tribe wanted to attack the Muslims, but the battle ended before they could do so. But this is again only a suspicion, only an allegation. We don't have proof for that at all. Only words that can't be considered evidence by anyone. Moreover, most of what Muslims know about the Banu Quraiza tribe comes from early historian Al-Tabari's work, The History of Al-Tabari, and of Ibn Ishaq's work, The Life of the Messenger of Allah. And in those books, which Muslim scholars nowadays don't even fully trust, we can see that the Banu Quraiza tribe did indeed break a treaty with Muhammad first, but then refused to help the attacking polytheists. And that Abu Sufyan, the leader of the polytheist attackers, even said to his own people, the Banu Quraiza have broken their promise to us, continued by the fact that the Banu Quraiza didn't help the polytheists, so that the polytheists had to take their arms and leave Medina, because there was no hope. The only information that we have is that the Banu Quraiza at some point negotiated with the polytheists and attempted to fight the Muslims, and that the tribe didn't fully help the Muslims, and that the Almighty Allah above suddenly gave Muhammad an idea. According to Islamic reports, when the Meccan attackers couldn't fully besiege and defeat the Muslims and had to retreat, the battle was over and Muhammad went home to put down his weapons. Now, according to those reports, when Muhammad was laying down his weapons, the angel Jibril, Gabriel, appeared to Muhammad and brought him a message. Gabriel allegedly told Muhammad that he shouldn't lay down his weapons because although Muhammad thinks he's done fighting, Allah is not done yet. The angel Gabriel told Muhammad to take his weapons again, gather his people and march against the Banu Quraiza tribe. Yes, this is exactly what Islamic sources tell us. Muhammad wanted to stop, but Gabriel came and approached him and told him to fight the Jewish tribe of the Banu Quraiza. And it's important to point out that Gabriel, according to Islam, doesn't have a free will. He doesn't have an own will. He doesn't have his own opinions. He acts completely in accordance with Allah's will. So Allah came in here and told Muhammad to get his weapons and to kill the last Jewish tribe. After that, Muhammad gathered his army, marched against the Banu Quraiza tribe, besieged them for 25 days and defeated them. 
The Banu Quraiza tribe surrendered unconditionally. Then, during the negotiations, Muhammad chose a person, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, as judge over the tribe. This person, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, was a chief of a tribe in Medina, a loyal follower and commander of Muhammad, and was known to be a very aggressive person who literally takes no prisoners. According to same historical reports, he complained in earlier cases about the taking of captives and wanted to kill all enemies. In many cases, he was the first to take Muhammad's command when someone needed to be killed. During the Battle of the Trench, Sa'd also said that nothing is dearer to him than fighting those who disbelieve in the Prophet. And here it gets very interesting. According to reports, Sa'd expressed during the besieging of the Banu Quraiza tribe that his last wish is to see his desire upon the Banu Quraiza. I think I don't have to speculate much on what that means. Sa'd decided, likely agreed with Muhammad, that all the men should be killed, their property should be divided among the Muslims, and all women and children would be taken as captives, and later on distributed among Muslims or sold. Muhammad said at this point, according to Ibn Ishaq's biography of Muhammad, that this ruling was similar to what Allah had ruled. Imagine Allah, the almighty and merciful God, orders the massacre of an entire tribe, including their youngest males, and the enslavement of their wives and children. Allah is so loving, so merciful, so great. So all men who reached puberty, which as we know today doesn't mean maturity, were killed. In the hadith, it's merely said that all men were killed, and one woman who mocked the Muslims and went crazy during these executions was also killed. Historians like Tabari estimate the count of executed men to be between 600 and 900, an entire tribe. And with this incident, all major Jewish tribes in Medina had been exterminated or expelled, a perfect scheme, and very befitting to Muhammad's promises to expel all Christians and Jews from the Arabian Peninsula and to fight all people until everyone embraces Islam. Also very much in harmony with the Quran's hate for Jews, and Muhammad's prophecies about fighting and killing Jews. This massacre also ensured Muhammad's authority over Medina, and no one was left to challenge him. It looks like all the Jews coincidentally served Muhammad's cause very well. I won't say that the Jewish parties were entirely innocent, but merely that one Jewish tribe was completely eradicated, and the other Jewish tribes almost had the same fate, all under suspicious circumstances and doubtful reasoning, ordered by Allah or Muhammad's alter ego. All this shows us that there was something heavily wrong with Muhammad, and that he wasn't interested in forgiveness regardless of faith at all. He was a cruel warlord, a brutal one. One simple wrongdoing, not even open betrayal, was enough for Muhammad to get rid of an entire tribe of over a thousand people. This was only the beginning of dozens and hundreds of massacres in history. This is also a big example that shows us Muhammad wasn't interested in forgiveness. He was the opposite of forgiving your enemies. Muhammad loved massacres because they made him and his religion so much greater. Let's face it, if you believe in Islam, you will find excuses and rationalize this massacre, no matter how innocent or guilty the other side was. Because Muhammad is never wrong, and Allah is perfect. With the same context, the same standards that Islamic sources tell us and Islamic apologists give us, if this happened today, in 2018, the world would stand up and condemn this massacre together. But we don't, because Muhammad was the holy prophet the genocidal prophet. Let's place Muhammad here, among these decent people, shall we? Okay, that looks beautiful. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon and get special rewards. The link is below in the description. Thank you so much for your support. Say no to a bloodthirsty religion. Say no to genocides. Stay away from Islam.